السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونسلم على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمد عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الدعاء آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم سل على سيدنا هنان محمد وعلى آل سيدنا سيدنا هنان محمد وبارك سلم سلم عليه سلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله Um, we've been talking about some of the various prophets and we've talked about Adam alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam and Idris alayhi salam and Hud and Saleh alayhi salam. And as we were saying, you know, many of the arguments that the disbelievers used against them were all the same. Uh, and the way they responded would also be the same. You know, because if you have the same argument, then the reply is going to be the same. Um, you know, you would see differences as far as the arguments in how it was presented, uh, but the root or the basis of the arguments was the same, and and even today it's still the same. Uh, I'm going to come back to aspects of Salih al Salam's story as it connects to us. And you will see variations within some of the details uh, between sources, which is, you know, not uncommon and it's usually not a big deal. Uh, the reason Allah SWT tells us these things in the Quran uh, without the details is the emphasis is on the lesson. Uh, because the lessons are always the same and the lessons, again, human nature doesn't change. Uh, the lessons haven't changed uh, and what we need to be doing hasn't changed. Uh, and but we need to be able to make that connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because all of them point toward him uh, because he is the greatest sign of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Uh, if you and as we said before, you know, if you want to know something exists uh, when you can't see it and can't use any tools to find, figure it out, uh, then you look for signs. And just like black hole, which you know. There, it is technically impossible to see a black hole because black hole, the gravitational pull is so strong that it draws in all the light, nothing is released. Uh, and so the only way our eyes see is through the reflection. So if light is reflecting off of something, then we can see it. But if there's no light reflecting off of it, there's no way to see it. Yet you ask any scientist, whether they're astronomer or anything else, they all tell you about the existence of black holes. You know, so how do we know they exist? Uh, because you see objects that are going around something that you can't see. So you know, okay, there's something there. There must be something there. Uh, and you say, this is a black hole. So we cannot see Allah. So he sent his signs. All of creation is his sign. Uh, you know, but there are certain signs that are more specific than other signs. And the greatest sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rasulullah sallallahu himself. That we look upon him, we look upon his perfection. And we know that something created him. And that something is the perfect creator who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him with perfection. As the perfect creation. And the best of creation. Khayr khalqillah. And this is the aqidah or must be the aqidah or the belief of every Muslim. You know, anyone who denies that Rasulullah is the best of all of creation, you know, has in reality exited Islam. Yeah. He is the final messenger who came with the final message, with the perfect message, and he presented it in a perfect manner. 
But if you look at the arguments that Quraysh used against him, they were the same arguments that the people of Nu al-Islam used against him, the same arguments that the people of Hud al-Islam used against him, Salih al-Islam, and all the rest of them. And we'll see this even more evident, uh, you know, evidently when we talk about Musa al-Islam. And we'll, we'll talk about that connection as well, inshallah, uh, when we get to that. You know, I had asked the people to read certain verses uh, before, uh, and I was expecting certain questions, which I did get. Uh, some brothers texted me uh, uh, certain questions, which are the ones that I expected. You know, if you look at one of the arguments that uh, the uh, these non-believers used against Nu al-Islam or Hud or Salih, and Rasulullah so so, you know, they would say that, you know, one of their arguments all, of all of the disbelievers was, you are a human like us. You know, and this is, if you read throughout the Quran, you don't find a single place where a believer or a follower of a prophet is saying that, oh, you're a human like us. The only people that say that are the disbelievers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in, in clinical medicine, you know, we have a saying that, you know, if it talks like a duck and walks like a duck, you call it a duck. Uh, and so if you're getting this argument uh, from people that, oh, he's a human like us, then, well, that's the same argument that the disbelievers used against the prophets. Yeah. We do find in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the, has the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, that say to them, oh my beloved, you say to them, who is he addressing here? First off, you know, because you, you see different places where he's addressing different people. Certain places he's addressing the believers. Certain places he's addressing the disbelievers. And so this verse is revealed addressing the disbelievers. And so it says, say, O my beloved, that I am a human being, mythlukum, of your similarity. You ha, but, you know, you ha, I receive revelation that Allah is one. Ilahukum ilahu wahid. That God is one. Which is interesting when you analyze this, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tell them that I'm a human or I'm a human being of your similitude. You know, myth You know, it doesn't say I'm exactly like you. You know, you see various places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws analogies using the term mythil, and you can't say that one is exactly like the other. There are similarities. So he's, this is what the term is used here, mislukum, that you are similar, that I am similar to you. But then the next part, I receive revelation that my Lord is one. So then that begs to, you know, the question, how many of us receive revelation? And if anyone thinks he's receiving a revelation, then his revelation is from shaitan. So we don't receive revelation, which automatically makes us different than him or him different than us. And then if we look at the hadith in Bukhari, when Rasulullah started fasting continuously, days on end, without breaking the fast, for up to 40 days, he wouldn't break the fast at all, nothing to drink, nothing to eat. And the companions, they decided, that, oh, we want to emulate him. You know, and after about two or three days, they started falling out. And Rasulullah said, what are you doing? They said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, we see you, we love you, we want to emulate you. And what does he say to them? He says, Ayyukum mithli, that are you like me? Meaning you're not like me. So we know right there, you know, that the when he addressed the believers, he said, I'm not like you, you're not like me. But he's addressing the disbelievers that I am similar to you. You know, because this is what they had in their minds. You know, 
that, oh, you're, you're like us. So why should we follow you? In the same way, when we look at Rasulullah as being a khayr of khalqillah, you know, he is the best of the creation of Allah. So he is best in what? In every aspect of his creation. The best in knowledge, the best in character, the best physically, the best emotionally, the best spiritually. You know, in every aspect of being best, he is best. He is better than all of the rest of creation. So now, you know, when we read these verses, though, you know, we see where you know, Nuh salam, you know, he addresses the disbelievers, and you know, of course, they were saying, "Oh, you're not better than us." He says, I'm, "I don't, I don't say to you that I'm better than you." And this is his humility. You know, the prophets didn't come saying, oh, you know, I'm better than you and, and look at me and look at this. No, they, they were humble before their Lord. They fulfilled their missions. You know, the way Allah SWT wanted them to fulfill their missions. And they did the, all of this with humility and patience. So when Nuh al Islam is say, saying, telling his people that I don't say that I'm better than you, it doesn't mean that he's not better than him. He is better than them. I mean, he's the prophet of Allah. Mm -hmm. But you look at the other verses where, you know, in Surah uh, Hud, verse 49, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after telling the story of Nuh alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says more or less to, to Rasulullah alayhi salam that, you know, this is what we have revealed to you. And this is what you did not know before. You know, and your people did not know this before. And then, you know, in Surah Araf, or Surah, Surah, yeah, Araf, Surah number seven, verse number 188, where again, rough translation of, of the verse where Allah SWT, you know, says to the Prophet, so some say to them, you know, and part of what he says to them, he says that, you know, he says that if I were, if I, if I had the knowledge of the unseen, then I would have uh, accumulated much good. And also, Nuh al Islam, when he's addressing his people, again, when he says that I don't say that I'm better than you, he also says that I don't say that I have the knowledge of the unseen, you know. Otherwise, again, the same thing, I would have accumulated much good. So if you take these verses, and there are many other verses, and if you take them in isolation, then you get, or, or what many people get is the understanding that Rasulullah SAW doesn't have the knowledge of the unseen. He doesn't have, he doesn't have the ilm al Yeah. You know. You know, this is the context that you get if you're looking at it from the perspective of he is like me or I am like him. You know, when we look at the Quran, you know, Islam is not one verse or one hadith. You know, Islam is totality. And as we've said before, Allah SWT says in the Quran, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran. You know, that do you not ponder over the Qur'an? أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عَنْدَ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجِدُوا فِي أَخْتَلَافًا كَثِيرًا You know, and if this Qur'an was from someone other than Allah, you would find many contradictions within it. So when we try to understand the Qur'an, we have to understand that there are no contradictions. You know, because you have verses such as, you know, in Surah Jinn, Surah number 71, where Allah SWT says, Alim al ghayb fala yudhiru ala ghaybihi ahada. Allah is Alim al ghayb He is the uh, uh, owner. Here really literally means he is the owner of the unseen. 
And he does not give this knowledge to anyone. But the verse doesn't end there. Or rather the verse might end, but the, but the statement doesn't end there. Because if you look at the next part, the, the next very next verse, the next part of the statement, which is, إِلَّا مَنْ اِرْتَدَى مِنْ رَسُولٍ you know, except for that prophet or except for that Rasul whom we have chosen. You know, so if he didn't give it to anyone, period, then why would there be a need to put an exception here? It would have just stopped with that statement that, you know, I don't, the, that Allah is the owner of the unseen. He doesn't give the knowledge to anyone. But he makes an exception here, except for that messenger whom we have. Chosen. And of course, who is the chosen one? Other than Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you look also, you know, again, trying to put all of these verses together. If you look at Surah uh, Surah Baqarah. Verse number 269, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, you know, again, here the prophets are saying to their people that, you know, if I had the knowledge of the unseen, I would accumulate much good. So now the question is, what is much good? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself defines what is good or what is an abundance of good. Khairan kathira. You know, good in abundance. He says in, in, in this in Surah Baqarah in verse 269 that kathira, he says that those who, are, who acquire hikmah, wisdom, they have been given khairan kathira, much good. Yeah. So now when I look at the prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what? In Surah Ali Imran, Surah number 3, verse 81, you know, when he took that covenant from the prophets. Yeah. Yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa saying, and remember when I took the covenant from the prophets that I give you a book and hikmah, wisdom. And then he says that whoever receives hikmah has received khairan kathira, good in abundance. But for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, what does he say for Rasulullah? He doesn't simply say that we have given him hikmah. He says, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ You know, in Surah Ali Imran, in Surah, you know, when Ibrahim al Islam made the dua uh, for the coming of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Surah Baqarah, uh, you know, what do he say? He says, you know, send them a messenger. You know, and then he says, who will teach them the book and the hikmah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I, uh, that I have done a great favor to the believers. I've done a great favor to the believers. That I have sent this messenger from amongst themselves. who rehearses the signs to them, he purifies them, and then he teaches them the book and the wisdom. So in order to be able to teach something, you have to have that before. You have to have acquired that. Now again, you know, a science teacher who doesn't know science can't teach science. He's not a science teacher. Yeah. Um, same way a math teacher or a person who doesn't know math can't be a math teacher. Rasulullah is not only the possessor of hikmah, he is the teacher of hikmah. And again, Allah SWT says that whoever has been given hikmah has been given khairan kathir, abundance of good. And what the prophets are telling their people is that if I had the knowledge of the unseen, I would, I would accumulate much good. Which they already have. Again, but they are addressing the disbelievers, getting them off their backs, 
you know, basically, you know, people that are hounding them over nonsense issues. When we come to verse 49 in Surah Hud, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, you did not know this before. And now you have been given this, uh, you know, this knowledge. The question is, when was the Rasulullah Sallallahu given the knowledge? You know, the Ummah was given the knowledge when the Rasulullah Sallallahu passed on the knowledge to the Ummah. When was the Rasulullah Sallallahu taught the Quran? And we find that in Surah Rahman, Surah number 55. You know, where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, starts off the Surah Ar-Rahman. You know, the merciful. Allah in His mercy, Allama al-Qur'an. Past tense, taught the Qur'an. But who did He teach it to? You know, He didn't teach it to me, He didn't teach it to you. Who did He teach it to? Yeah. And then He tells us who He taught it to. Because the one that He taught it to, He said, Khalaq al-Insan, that He sent Him. The one who has taught the Qur'an was sent as Insan. And then he says that وَعَلَّمَهُ bayan. And then we taught him the explanation. But what is the explanation? You know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already taught him the Qur'an. Before sending him as insan. And then once he sent him as insan, then he taught him the explanation, meaning the bayan. Not the explanation that Rasulullah s.a.w. didn't understand already. He already understood. But he, again, you know, this world is a reflection of what came before and what will come after. To make it easier for us to understand. If you take someone who's been taught, even in this world, you know, you take someone who has a PhD degree in mathematics. Well, they don't, you don't, can't just put them in a classroom and they start teaching. You know, because they understand everything at this level. Now they have to know how to teach it to people who don't, who, who can't even understand something at this level. You know. So how do you how do you take something that that you understand at 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 a level that is beyond the comprehension of everybody else, and now you need to bring it down to everybody else's level? So this is Allah Mahul Bayan. You know, this is where he's teaching it, where he's taught you know how to explain to the masses what this really means, you know, because he already understood it. And we see this further in Surah Taha, Surah number 20, verse 114. And if you read the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Rasulullah so I'm saying, you know, and because of time, I'm going over these things quickly. And we'll go over these over and over again and come back to them uh, in more detail later on as, we, as certain topics and, and certain issues come up. Uh, so this isn't the final word on this. You know, because I know people are probably thinking, well, what about this verse and what about that verse? And there are a lot of verses. Uh, and we will go over those later, inshallah. You know, there's so many verses. But again, you can't, you can't understand any verse in isolation. Otherwise, you end up contradicting other verses. You have to understand them together. And, and the understanding has to be at a level where you're not contradicting one from the other. Otherwise, the understanding is not correct. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there's no contradiction here. Mm -hmm. So if I understand that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa not to have the knowledge of the unseen, then that contradicts all of the verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about him having the knowledge of the unseen. وَمَا هُوَ عَلَى الْغَيْبِ بِذَنِينَ That he does not hesitate in telling the things of the unseen. How can he tell the things of the unseen if he isn't given that knowledge? If he doesn't know the knowledge of the unseen. The, you know, some people say, well, this refers to Allah. Well, okay, fine. If you say this refers to Allah, that he doesn't hesitate in telling the knowledge of the unseen. Well, who is he telling to? He didn't tell it to me. Who is he telling it to? Other than his Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa But in verse 114 of surah, Taha. You know, if you read the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing Rasulullah. So I'm saying that, you know, when the message or when the revelation comes, don't 
go ahead of it. Yeah. Because Jibreel al Islam would come with the revelation and be reciting the revelation, and Rasulullah would be reciting before him. So, how can somebody who doesn't know be reciting before? You know, this tells you that he already knew. He's waiting on the revelation of Jibreel. So that, you know, Jibreel was basically an indication that it's time now to divulge this to the people. You know, there are many other verses. Verse uh, 113 of Surah, um, Surah Nisa, Surah number 4, verse 113. You know, where, where Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, talks about his favor upon Rasulullah sallallahu You know, about him giving him the knowledge and then saying that I have done this great favor. Kana fudlullah alayhi azima. You know, azim, this great, great favor upon you by giving you this knowledge. So the knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu is great. Otherwise, there's no... No, you know, there's no sense in making that. If I look at this from, you know, these are verses, and again, there are more verses, and we will go over those later, inshallah. But if, if I look at this from the point of hadith, you know, the other aspect also, one other verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about verse um, 16, uh, 59 of surah number 6, surah an'am, verse number 59, where he says that within this book is contained the, uh, the knowledge of, uh, you know, of uh, whatever is wet or dry. Within Kitabun Mubin, Fi Kitabun Mubin. It contains, you know, this, this Kitabun Mubin contains the knowledge of whatever is wet or dry. So what? Everything is either wet or dry. And Rasulullah is not only the one who possesses the book, but he's also kitab. He is the teacher of the book. So if he doesn't have that knowledge, then what is he teaching? In Sahih Muslim, there is a narration where one day the people were asking questions of Rasulullah And people, you know, sometimes they, there's that tendency. And when we talk about Surah Baqarah, this will be very evident. You know, the, the story of Musa al-Islam in Surah Baqarah, which is why Baqarah is called Baqarah. But people have this tendency of asking questions that will get them into trouble. You know, you know, if, if Rasulullah would say, OK, do this, then you go and do it to the best of your ability. You don't need to start asking questions that, well, you know, should I do it this way or that many way and this and that. And then if you start, if he started to get specific, then you say, well, I can't do that. And you know, which is what the Jews did. There are many things because of the mercy of Rasulullah that he wanted or he loved, but he would not do regularly because he didn't want them to become an obligation on us and he felt that maybe they would be too hard upon us. This is his mercy to the Ummah. But people started asking questions and some of them were asking questions of this nature. Yeah. And so Rasulullah his Jamal, his beauty turned to Jalal. And so now, he stood up and he said that, ask me anything you know, from today until Qayyama and I will tell you. So one of the companions, his, there's a question whether who his, or rather as to who his true father really was. So he stood up and he asked, he said, Ya Rasulullah, who is my father? And the Rasulullah immediately told him the name, Khuzayma. He didn't have to take weeks to do a DNA test or anything else. Immediate. You know. This is who your father is. Who your true father is. Hmm. Not in the hadith, but you find this in the explanation of the, the hadith and other narrations where there was a hypocrite. The hypocrites when Rasulullah was saying, ask me anything. They started looking at each other and they're saying to each other, you know, through their eyes that, oh, you know, he's saying ask anything and we are amongst him and he doesn't even know us. 
So one of them got the gall to stand up and ask a question. He asked, he said, he said, Ya Rasulullah, where will my end be? And Rasulullah said, the fire. So he tucked his tail underneath and sat down. And then Rasulullah repeated the question, ask me anything from today until Qiyamah and I will tell you. Omar Radio understood the situation. So he, he, he stands and he kneels before Rasulullah Sallallahu and he says, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu it is enough for us that Allah is our Lord, that the Quran is our book and that you are our messenger. Again, Rasulullah Sallallahu repeated himself and again, Omar Radio in the same humble way, saying, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu it's enough for us. And so finally that Jalal came back to Jamal. But my question is, if he didn't, you know, if he, he's asking the people, ask me anything from today until Qiyamah and I will tell you. So my question is, if somebody had stood up and asked him that on April the 14th, 2000, uh, uh, 2020, would there be a conference going on between you know, this Islamic community center uh, and so and so and so and so and so and so. Does that question not fall under, under anything between then and Qiyamah? And he's saying, you ask anything and I will answer it for you. Yeah. Which is interesting because these, you know, he also, uh, you know, which there are other aspects of this, but it also shows us that he had the authority as to what question could be asked. Because the the companion had asked him many times, when is Qayyama? And yet no one asked him at that time. Yeah. This is the authority of Rasulullah. I've gone over a couple of minutes. I'm going to end here. But the, you know, this is not the end of, of this discussion. Uh, because we're going to see these arguments come up. Uh, and there are other verses, as I said, that I have, you know, I haven't even touched. You know, showing us uh, the honor and the status of Rasulullah. But just the last five minutes, I'm going to take extra five minutes, is that when we tie this connection to the people of Saleh, you know, if you look at the story of Saleh, and I said some of the details differ, but if you look at the story, you had one person who killed the camel as the instigation of a few people. And you had others who helped him, but you really had one person who killed the camel. You had others who instigated it. So you have some who are directly or indirectly involved in this act. Mm -hmm. But you have most of the people who, who were not involved in the act. And yet the punishment came upon the whole community. Why? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the rest of them were complicit. You know, they didn't want to get involved. Yeah, let them do what they're doing. Yeah, and so, so they did not stop him. They didn't even attempt to stop them after knowing what they're going to do. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala included them in the punishment as well. Yeah. Our purpose for coming into this world is to worship Allah and to honor and respect Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says clearly in the Quran, honor him and respect him. Honor him and respect him. And yet there are people who challenge, who, 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 who recite the kalma, but they challenge the knowledge of Rasulullah they challenge his authority. They challenge all of these other things. And the rest of us are complicit. You know, I don't want to create fitna. I don't, uh, you know, that's just his opinion. You know, he has a right to his opinion. I don't want to say anything. You know. In the case of Saleh al-Islam, they simply killed a camel. 
In the case of Rasulullah, so some the honor of the Habib Allah, the blessed of the, the beloved of Allah is being attacked. And if we're gonna say, oh, you know, we don't want to get involved. We just gonna, you know, just don't want to rock the boat. Then what should we expect? Yeah. It is because of Rasulullah, his presence, that nothing worse has happened to us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow the honor and the dignity of his Habib, beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, go unanswered. Or the challenges to this honor and respect. So we need to find out which side, which side of, the, of the line we're on. You know, and we need to get some intestinal fortitude. Because the one who is challenging his knowledge, challenging his authority, challenging his honor, challenging any aspect of Rasulullah so some perfection, is the fitna himself. And if I don't say anything or do anything against that, then I have become part of that fitna. Again, you know, again and again, we'll go over this again. Uh, and other aspects, and inshallah, you know, no class tomorrow. Uh, we're still trying to figure out how to get on a better platform so more people can, more people who want to listen can listen. Uh, so we're still working on that, uh, inshallah, soon. But no class tomorrow. We will have class Monday. Uh, there won't be class Tuesday because I have a meeting in the office uh, Tuesday afternoon. Uh, and then we'll back on Wednesday. But also Ramadan is coming. Uh, so we may need to adjust the time so people have time to make their pakoras. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, so we'll uh, do that. Uh, we'll talk more about that uh, Monday, inshallah. So uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, uh, guide us, and uh, uh, forgive us. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa lana muhammad wa ala ala salli ala sayyidina wa lana muhammad wa ala ala sayyidina wa Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path and fill our hearts with your true love and the true love of your beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, his family, his companions, and all of those whom you love. Uh, forgive us uh, for not honoring your beloved وسلم, as he should be honored uh, and allow us to do that uh, and allow us to die in a condition we, where we die for your Habib وسلم, and you raise us up where you are pleased with us and we are pleased with you. وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمته يا رحمه